going to be here for, wait, how do you know if it's hang out? It's his life. Yep, we're good. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. Hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> so, thank you all for coming to our second roundtable discussion. Um, so, Nina and I will be facilitating it, but we'll get through introduction soon. Um, but just as a general like description of what we plan to accomplish from this discussion. So in honor of Philippine History Month, MAFA Board is hosting this roundtable to embrace and celebrate the Filipino American culture. And then as part of the Midwest Association of Filipino Americans, MAFA, this discussion will revolve around how we as Filipino Americans and Asian Americans growing up in the Midwest region as opposed to other areas. Um, we will also be using recent statistics to, to show the population differences between Asians living in the Midwest versus other regions with certain limitations as Filipino Americans and Asian Americans living in the Midwest. It is important for us to embrace our culture and to celebrate it as much as possible. So that's just a little intro and then so the structure of how we're going to do this whole roundtable thing, um, we'll start with introductions with your name, your school, slash um, what year are you, your affiliated organization, and then whether or not you identify as a Filipino, Filipino-American, Asian, Asian-American, and if you were born in the Midwest or if you were born in another region or even in a different country. So, Nina, do you want to start? Okay. okay. Hello everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nina. I am the Vice President External for MAFA Board. Um, I am currently a junior um, at Wayne State University. Let's see. Um, I'm affiliated with PhilSoc um, at Wayne State. And then so I was born in the Midwest. I was born in the Metro Detroit area. Um, I do identify as Filipino American and Asian American. Popcorn Allison. Hi, I'm Allison. Um, I'm a junior at Illinois State University, and I, I, or I am part of Asian Pacific American Coalition, or APAC. I was actually born in Thailak, Philippines, so we moved here when I was a baby. So I still identify as Filipino American because I've lived here for most of my life and I am an American citizen. So popcorn to Jessica. Um, my name is Jessica. I go to UW Milwaukee and I'm affiliated with the Filipino Student Union. I'm a junior and I'm also the MAFA rep for FSU. So there's that. Um, I identify as Filipino American or Asian American. I was born here in Milwaukee, but my parents have to remind me I was made in the Philippines, so you get the best of both worlds, right? <laughs> um, yeah, popcorn to Nicole. Hello, I am Nicole Colastro. I am a senior at Loyola University, Chicago. I am an exercise science major, um, and my affiliated organization is COPWA. I am also the Vice President Internal for MAFA Board this year, and I do identify as Filipino American. I did grow up in the Midwest. I was born and raised here, so I've been here all my life, so nothing too exciting. And Popcorn Charles. Hello, my name is Charlie. Um, Oh shoot, I forgot the questions. Uh, I am not really affiliated with anyone. I was in Kapwa last year and I did a lot of MAFA stuff as well. But I'm really here for support just because I think the discussions are really important. Um, I identify as Filipino American, um, but also Filipino, just because that's in my blood ethnically. But I also think the Ameri Filipino American is many as well. Um, I was born and raised in the Midwest, but in Chicago, I was never, never, never. Popcorn, did you get everything? Nathan. Oh, popcorn. Oh. All right, um, hi guys, my name is Nathan Clyde Diaz. Um, I attend the University of Illinois at Chicago. I am affiliated with the Filipinos in Alliance. 
Uh, I did. I don't hold a board position, but I did hold a, hold a board position two years ago. I was born and raised here in Chicago, so Midwest uh, represent. Um, I do identify myself as a Filipino American and very proud of our heritage. So that's me. Uh, is there anyone else? No, I think that's it. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. <laughs> cool. No. Okay. So, like I said, I gave you guys the general um, description for our roundtable today. Um, so, how we kind of wanted to um, first, we wanted to establish the safe space and courtesy to others participating in this discussion. Um, so. Uh, we pretty much all started, but if you guys can have your mics on mute when someone else is speaking, just so that other sounds um, aren't being heard. And then also courtesy of, to what others are saying and whether or not if they choose to share any personal experiences, just please be respectful to that. And yeah, okay. Nina. So kind of just to start off, um, just to give you guys a little bit more of an idea, um, just like Nicole said, in terms of establishing a safe space and being respectful towards others, um, we really encourage like the participation aspect as well. Like, don't be afraid to kind of hold back. Sorry, that's my microwave. That's my mom. Sorry, there's a lot of noises. I can move if it gets too noisy. But yeah, it's um. We really encourage the participation. A lot of you guys are our muffler ups too. Like it, you guys know, like the more that we get to share experiences, the more we get to learn about not only each other but like the different types of like, I guess aspects um, and views that we have um, within our community of Mafa. Um, kind of just to start off to give you an idea of, of what we're talking about too. Um, according to the U.S. Um, Census Bureau um, in 2010 reports show that the um, that of the total population in the United States, 5.6 percent um, of the population identify as Asian Americans, and that's about that was about 6.9 million people. More than one half of that percentage lives in the West Coast, with California being the top state of the Asian American population. So, out of the 6.9 percent. Um, uh, I'm sorry, 6.9 million people, um, 4.2 million people were of, of Asian Americans were in California. Um, I guess what we can just start off in doing is like, does anybody just as an initial interpretation of like being an Asian American or a Filipino um, American in the Midwest, like do you see any type of contrast or like in comparison to the coasts or other regions of the United States? <laughs> Sorry, I thought I muted before I said that. Sorry, but yeah, does anybody want to go? Um, I can talk about that because uh, so I go to Illinois State University and we are Central Illinois. And compared to where I grew up, I grew up in the northern suburbs of Chicago or by Chicago, so like really up north. And there's like a lot more diversity there. And I grew up with Asian friends and Filipino friends. But I came to ISU and we have one small Asian club with maybe like 30 to 40 people top. And it was, I mean, growing up, or not even growing up, but coming to college and being the only Asian in my classes and like thinking that ISU prides itself on diversity, but really there's like, and it's really, it was really difficult at first because like I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to talk to. I, there was no one I could really identify with. And that's why I joined my Asian Oregon campus. Um, I guess I'll go. Um, I guess for me, I was always born and raised in Chicago, so I guess like finding the identity of being Filipino American wasn't too tough because I feel like, I think in my opinion, I feel like Chicago, out of all the Midwestern states, are is probably the most. I feel like it's the most diverse, it's one of the most diverse cities within the Midwest. So. For me, it wasn't tough regarding like finding identity my, myself. But like, if I were to probably compare it to uh, Californians, like let's say a uh, Phil Ams from California's compared to like the Midwest, because I do have uh, family within California, and it's just like a different vibe. Honestly, I can't really describe it. 
but it's just how how I how I view it. It's just like different vibes from each other. Like it's just like I don't know. Like with California, they have their their type of like attitude compared to the Midwest in that aspect. I that's how I feel. But then I just can't really like jot it down and be like, oh, Californians are this and and Midwesterns are like that. But I do appreciate at a Midwestern at mid, at mid, mid people uh, uh, being sorry with us being from the Midwest. Like we have that like that like uh, hospitality, that family vibe. So I guess that's how, how I would describe a uh, uh within the Midwest. They have that that family vibe, and I do feel like we do have it within my Philippine organizations, Filipinos in Alliance, because a lot of them come from like you know from high schools that do not have a platform where the majority of them were are, grew up in a Filipino environment and for them to come here to UIC to have that environment and the fact that it's convenient that UIC is in the middle of Chicago it is really convenient to like experience diversity within the area so it's like it's like it's, it's quite blessing in, in that type of way but yeah it wasn't for me it wasn't a problem but I could definitely see like how other people from Illinois that grew up in the suburbs that they don't have that uh, atmosphere I could see like how how they struggled in some sort of way. So that's how I personally see, see it. So um, I had the opposite story, basically. I grew up in Oak Creek, which is like a small city outside of Milwaukee. And it's a school of like over 2000 kids, but like you could probably count on like one hand how many Filipinos there were. And I was like the only one who could actually speak and understand the language too. So it was kind of hard to like, our culture when they don't even know much about their culture either and like I thought going to Milwaukee I wouldn't find that many Filipinos either because it's a huge Hmong community here in Milwaukee and I know Hmong isn't that prominent in like other places so I was like oh maybe I'll just find like another Asian org and stuff but like it's crazy like when you run into people and you start talking about like your background and like oh I'm actually half Filipino and stuff and like with FSU being such a new org we didn't think like we would find so many Filipinos but like at our first meeting, we had like 35 people show up and a good majority actually had Filipino blood. So it's like, I think people, I, don't, I wouldn't say they're scared to know about their culture. It's just like, I don't think people talk about their culture enough to know that there's so much more around them. And I think that's like, what's so great about having organization stuff is that you learn so much from each other and you learn so much about yourself at the same time. And then like, it helps you identify like individually and as a whole group, so. Yeah. <laughs> For me, with my experience growing up in the Midwest, I grew up pretty much in the southwest suburbs of the Chicago land. And so it's predominantly white. And um, I don't really know. I feel like this is common for a lot of, well, not a lot, but for some Filipino Americans that in the United States, that their parents kind of steer not steer away from the mm -hmm. culture but it's like i wasn't i didn't grow up learning tagalog or any of the dialects that my parents know and while my parents still instilled the culture within us i think that was something that i was kind of lacking and it kind of distanced me distanced myself from the culture because i obviously wouldn't understand anything on the tv shows or i'd have to use context clues to understand my parents or family relatives um, and so I felt kind of burdened by that and growing up in such a predominantly white high school, um, middle school, elementary school, my educational environments, um, it kind of distanced me more to not even be out in tune with my identity and my culture. Um, even going into high school, I remember this one moment where they were trying to start up a Filipino club. And, and I didn't realize it until later, but the high school administration that I had, they shut it down because they said they want to be more inclusive of all Asian cultures. And so they created an Asian student organization for our high school. And looking back at it now, that's very destructive and very, with the environment that I grow in, it's not surprising because, you know, we have to embrace diversity in order to where we are in this world and for them to kind of group us all together was kind of speaks to the environment I kind of grew up in. So college where I was surrounded by um, other Filipinos and a lot of other 
people who really appreciated the culture um, to understand where we all kind of came from. So I could definitely see a difference even in the Midwest from me growing up in the suburbs to those who lived in the Chicagoland area, um, those who came to Chicago and attended Loyola later on, um, if they grew up in the Philippines first and foremost. Um, and so I think that's kind of my perspective on how the Filipino-ness of, of us all is even diverse here in the Midwest. Um, and then comparing that to the East Coast, West Coast, I asked one of my friends recently who grew up in California, um, and I told him, like, oh, I wish, like, I know a lot of Polish people. They have, like, Polish school. Um, and other cultures, they have these different social circles that kind of are able them are able for their youth to be in tune with their culture here in the Chicago area. Um, but he said in California that there are, you know, people who are Filipino that go to Filipino school um, and they learn the language or they talk about different things. And I thought that was pretty awesome. And so I wish that we kind of had that here. So um, there's just a range of different, you know, facets to our culture that um, ranges not only in the Midwest, but even nationally. Nicole, did you, wait, did you, have, did you have anything to add to it? Because I know you're going to ask the next question, but I want to add to it. Oh, yeah, you add, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, in oh, Michigan, it's like, I think, so unlike Chicago, where we had, where there's like, you know, the Philippine um, consulate downtown and everything, like, it's really hard. There's a very big presence. There's, it's called the Filipino American um, Filipino American Coalition of Michigan, they're called Falamco, and they do a lot in terms of like the older generation. Um, so like probably like our parents and Lola's and Lolo's age, like they have a lot involved in that generation. But for like us as millennials and um, the generation after us, it's like slowly but surely dying out, especially in Michigan. And it's like, it's they're struggling. Like the youth um, aspect of the Falamco organization is slowly um, kind of just dying out. And I think, I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys were friends with me on Facebook about a year ago, but I went off on a Facebook post because um, when I was trying to recruit for PhilSoc when I was on board, um, I've met a lot of Filipinos that were like, oh, like, I don't really do the Filipino thing. And I'm like, what do you, you don't do your own, like, what you don't do your, like, your own self, like your own culture, like what do you mean? And like people were like, yeah, like being Filipino is like super like annoying or like they don't like having the fact that they have to identify with it. And I was so mad. Like I would personally just get so upset and like try to be like really polite and respectful and just be like, okay, like you do you, whatever. But then I would just complain when I got home or like to my friends about it. Um, and I think it's because of that lack of presence here. Um, like out in the on the west coast especially and kind of the east coast too because they have a pretty big presence there too but it's the idea of it's not normal like on the in the west coast everywhere you turn it's like oh my god look a filipino like that's so crazy like of, of, with us visiting but for them they're like oh this is normal jolly bee seafood city like let's just go it's it's sunday time to turn up you know and then with us it's like oh my gosh like mom can we go to chicago go to seafood city and go get jolly bee because it's so not normal here and it's like um i think people really because it's not normal to see a lot of Filipinos or not normal to like stay in touch with their culture because we do live in a predominantly white um, region of the United States. It's a very like a lot of people find it like disheartening to identify with it and they don't like it because they're used to only having white friends. They're used to only having to like not eating rice every day like because their parents are raised that way too, like to kind of affiliate them within the American culture and not have them be different. So it's like a blessing to be Filipino or American or to identify as Asian American because it makes you different. But depending on how you look at it, people like, people hate it too. So I guess it just kind of depends on how you identify and how you see yourself in like what group and the different aspects as well. Nicole? back to you cool okay thank you all for sharing about that 
Um, so that is kind of what we want. We want to gain like your guys' experiences um, of how you guys personally grew up and how like, you know, living in the Midwest now has affected your guys' um, lives in general, because obviously you are all affiliated with your perspective orgs. Um, so that kind of, a few of you guys touched on our next discuss discussion question, which is, um, what are the difficulties in living in a predominantly white area, or, and how do you guys think it will affect the future generations? Um, so I guess for like, yeah, for like my perspective, I remember being, it's like the always the lunchbox story. Um, so like for lunch, you know, I had like my, my rice and like my spam and eggs. And I specifically remember this lunch mom asking me like, oh, what's your favorite food? And this lunch mom, um, she was white and I was like, spam and eggs. She's like, spam? Like, do you just eat it out of a can? I was like, what you mean? That's not even sanitary. But um, yeah, so it was really shocking to me and I was just a little kid at the time. But as, I mean, I guess in my elementary school, it was a predominantly white area. Um, but obviously when I got into high school and like college and everything, all of my friends were Filipinos, um, Filipinos and or Asians. But I feel like overall a big difficulty is that like barrier. It's not that I'm sure she didn't take any offense to it and like asking me that question, but it's the fact that there's like that cultural barrier that they just don't know because um, several areas just don't have like those resources or like anything that for them to gain that type of knowledge that it's fine to eat spam and rice every day. I don't know, um, but yeah. So if anyone else wants to share. All right, um, so like I said, like my campus is really predominantly white. Like our Asian org itself is so small. And like apparently this year we have a lot more Filipinos than any other Asian race, which is cool, like it's awesome. But still like Filipinos are really like rarely known in this area. We are in central Illinois. It's basically like Southern Illinois. <laughs> so we're like really, we're compared to like UIC and Kapo, it's really different. And so it's it's really difficult sometimes because um, you can't go to a restaurant and like find food that you really want or like if you really want Filipino food like you have to make it yourself and you have to drive two and a half hours to go home and go to Seafood City and go to Jollibee and all that fun stuff but definitely hard sometimes I've had since I've gotten to college I've had a lot more racist encounters than when I was growing up like I legitimately had a girl tell me my freshman year to stop being so Asian. And I kind of just looked at her and I was like, what do you mean? Like, I don't, I don't understand. And it was, it was shocking. Cause it's like, I've never had anyone blatantly be that racist toward me. When no one around me could relate to that. I like all these microaggressions and I just, I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. And it was definitely a really hard transition cause it was my freshman year of college, so. All right, yeah, I guess I'll go. Um, so regarding growing up, um, okay, so in go going to a private school from kindergarten to eighth grade, I want to say I had a diverse experience because, like, um, like, it was just a diverse experience, but, like, at the time, like, I was very fortunate at a young age to know where I stand, where, what am I, I like, yeah, I'm Filipino-American, I'm Asian, I'm all that, and then high school um like we had a good amount of filipinos like um in the previous um upper round table i said i was uh, i did filipino club in my high school but like the population for my high school was like mostly white and latino um so it was kind of tough it's kind of weird especially like being the token asian in some of the classes and stuff participated like certain like discussions it's like when you say things like like you don't know if people could like relate to to your lifestyle and all that but like i guess regarding like some racist one racist thing i, I probably did had some racist uh, encounters throughout high school um i remember my freshman year I, I was just being late in class just went to my locker and then the, these two white guys approached me and went up to me I'm um, sorry for the language. They went up. Sorry, sorry for my language, but this is how it went down. So they went up to me. It's like, hey man, is it true that 
a all Asian people have small penises. And then, like, at the time, like, I, I was just, like, shocked to the point. But then, like, I just didn't do anything about it and just walked away. That was just, like, one incident. It's like, well, like, it was just speechless. It's like, you don't want to be... You don't want to be like uh, cause cause like a scene or anything because like just growing up like what I've been taught is like all oh, things like don't cause cause conflict and just don't don't lay fists just just be at your best behavior and just let let things be that's how I I, I grew up and like I guess yeah I had some some friends were like joking making fun of like Filipinos I'm like oh you're a Filipinist it's, it's just like so just these like weird encounters it's like kind of make me makes me cringe like today but like those are just small co small encounters regarding like just growing up in a predominantly uh, white high school like I think there's like some concepts or some prejudice that these white or these other ethnicities have towards Asian Americans because obviously like we live especially in the past like how Asian Americans are persuaded are um, portrayed in media and all that like that could definitely have a huge impact on like how different ethnicities see us as Asians. Cause like, I guess like in media, they see Asian women as like um, hypersexual and like Asian men are like emascul masculine. Like, oh, everyone like, oh yeah, I guess the strongest a Asian you could be is like Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan. So like in that aspect is like, that's the, the, the type of racism I probably face in high school. But luckily enough, when attending the UIC, considering that UIC is quite a kind of diverse, uh, quite a diverse uh, campus. I really enjoyed that, like just sharing like similar backgrounds, whether it, whether if you're Filipino or a different minority, I do appreciate that. And whenever like, like, like I think there was one time, like there was like a, a racist guy, like in the middle of our quad and like, there was like a lot of students just surrounding them and just like rebelling against that dude. So just having that environment, I'm really proud to see like how UIC does not tolerate racism, hate. And especially since like, one more story, like with Trump, like having, he was supposedly supposed to have a, a rally by the UIC pavilion, but then like, I think UIC, like people within the Chicago, Chicagoland area just shut it down. It was just fairly disruptive. Like sure, like you can see good and bad within it, but then like, but then like how I see it, I think it's cool that UIC does not tolerate these type of actions. So yeah, I'm very fortunate and happy to see what UIC has, despite not being a huge uh, prideful school, but, but they do definitely pride diversity. And that's how I see UIC and I'm really proud to be a UIC flame. <laughs> um, I have to go soon, but I just want to say, um, uh, Thank you, Nicole and Nina and the rest of Mafa Board for facilitating these discussions because I really think they're important and I hope more people are able to participate in the future. Um, but this is pretty awesome and I think it's really important to think about these things. Um, just to give my perspective and my, um, um, in terms of how I, my experience growing up in a community, I want to touch back on what Allison said about microaggressions and different tokenisms and covert over racisms that I faced. I think one thing growing up is it's hard for me to kind of because I think because I was I grew up in such a uh, predominantly white area um, where Filipino I didn't have the support of other Filipinos. I think it was just normalized for me, which is why it's hard for me to kind of see what it what the impact was at the time. And so a lot of my experiences are going back to reflection of how this kind of influenced me and the jokes that were made and different microaggressions that were said to me um, that I didn't know were microaggressions until later on in the future. And so I think that's kind of my experience is that they were just normalized for me that I was supposed to be okay with it and kind of going along with the majority because everyone thought it was funny so I might as well think it's funny too but in reality it's something that's destructive to not only the Filipino culture, but other people who are are facing different stereotypes and microaggressions. Um, and I think that's really unfortunate. Going to Loyola, I think I was having a hard time. I didn't really want to join the Filipino student organization at the time. Um, but I think if it wasn't for that network and that support and organization, I don't think I'd be able to kind of have that awareness of my culture 
that. So, um, yeah, I think it'd be definitely different if I didn't have that outlet, um, like Koppel. But I just want to say thank you. I hope you have a great discussion. This is Thanks, a Charles. Have a good day. Bye bye. Okay, cool. Was there anyone else? Okay, just go. <laughs> um, I think with me, my biggest issue um, growing up in Oak Creek was trying to explain to people what Filipino was because most of us do have Hispanic last names. So, like, I always, when I did get racist jokes, they would be towards like Mexicans or like any type of Latino. And it's like, do I have a right to get offended because I'm not even Hispanic or should I get offended? And like, um, like I said, there was barely any Filipinos and the only Filipinos at my school were like my cousins. So you couldn't really like have anyone else to like defend yourself. Like when I would try to explain people, oh, like we're from the Philippines. They're like, oh, why aren't your eyes small? Like, I don't know, like <laughs> we were colonized by Spain. Like it's just so much to explain to people. And then like their ignorance just like, it just like everything just goes over people's heads and it's like why ask if you don't really care like i don't know um i think that like, yeah that was definitely the biggest issue just trying to get people like to understand like philippines is a separate country and it's like we're not we're not mexican we're not we're part of asia but like filipinos are a whole different thing so i think that was just my biggest issue Thank you, Jessica, and everybody for sharing. Um, I guess just to kind of go off of that, um, do you guys feel that there's a difference of how those um, of how those who live in the Midwest learn and celebrate their culture than those who live on the West Coast? I guess for me, I want to say a big yes. Because when you look at like the West Coast, man, like I actually have a, I learned over this summer that I have a cousin that's actually part of the, the Filipino organization in uh, Cal State Northridge, man. And it's just crazy to see like him talking about his experience being part of the uh, FASA there. And like how like, like you know how we have MAFA, I think in Southern California, they have their own, their own region of like MAFA, specifically in Southern California. And I think it's just crazy that, and I think it's, I guess I'm envious that they have that type of atmosphere, like to have like one, like that Southern SoCal region, just to have their own like MAFA sphere to like um, just network and just, <laughs> I'm like, I'm really envious of how, how they have that experience because like, it's just so big. Like they have like friend, the friendship games and like some of these universities are like, 30 minutes to an hour away and so like and it, and it, and it seems like it, make, it makes it easier for them to check out each other's um, events as well like whether if they're going to another school, school's PCN or whatnot so I am envious that uh, so, like the west coast especially SoCal has that type of environment compared to us in the midwest I mean it's tough because like we're quite there's quite a distance towards each other and it, it does make it tough to like um, have these um, to go to one one schools to check out each other's events or just say like the environment that we grow up in like could be really tough as well so to answer that question yes I, I do believe that it is easier to be to learn about your cult, Filipino culture and I guess I guess to then it is right here so yeah I feel like in the Midwest, there's a lot more pride in being Filipino because there's not many. So whenever you see another Filipino, you're like, oh my God, you're Filipino? Like, I, like the other day, actually, um, there was a, someone from the career center here on campus coming to talk to our class and she was Filipina. So I talked to her afterwards and like, I asked her, I was like, oh, Filipino kaba. And she got so excited. She's like, there are no Filipinos. Like, you should come visit me. Like, we'll chat. And I was like, that's so exciting because you never see, you don't, it's not like you never see, but you barely see other people that you can relate to. So whenever you get the chance, you're like, yeah, like, oh, you want, you want to go get some city gun? Let's go do that. Let's come over, like, mix spam and rice. <laughs> like, it's so exciting. And you want to embrace that while you can, because you only get so many of those moments. 
Yeah, like drawing on from that, like it's so weird, like how exciting it does feel to see like, like in, there was a time in the library at the beginning of the semester, I kept making eye contact with this dude that I walked past. And so like, this could have went the wrong way. But before I left the library, I said, hoy. And he turned around and I asked if he was Filipino and he was, and turns out he's related to one of my best friends. And then like, we recruited him and then we got a bunch of whole other people. And it's like, I don't know, like, where have you been hiding? <laughs> like, you just never see these people come out that often, but it's not like they're all holding like a Filipino flag over their head or something. It's like, I don't know. It's just so exciting when like, you're able to spot out like the people just because they're so little instead of being immersed in so much. Cause um, my friend who actually transferred to Texas, he took a video of his FSA down there and they had like a good like 60, 70 people at their board meeting. And it's like Filipinos everywhere. And just like um, you said earlier, like it makes me envious. Like I wish like I could like have more Filipinos. I wish I could speak Tagalog more often, but it's hard. But like when you do get the chance, like it just feels so good. <laughs> yeah, like in comparison to other regions or like a good example, is like trying to get funding to go to fact from your school is like so hard because technically you don't really matter like okay cool like we gave you the space for all of you filipinos to be together but like we're not going to give you that much funding and i've heard that like from a lot of different schools especially like last year a lot of reps would complain about that but like it's so different because on the west coast like filipinos matter because like we're such a big population or like asian american um like student organizations matter like for example um what so like one of my sister's really close friends and one of my close friends from high school they go to stanford and they have um they are called their organizations called pasu and um pasu has like two different like classification types of members for to my understanding there's like um active and then like i forgot the other names like semi-active but like they're active they're the ones that go to like all the meetings and like is 100 percent in it and then the semi-active let's call them go to like maybe half or like to, or less than that um just their actives there's I, he was like oh yeah like how many actives do you guys have and i was like well it, like for wayne state there's probably like 30 like anywhere between 20 to 30 people that constantly go to everything. I was like, how about for PASU? And for PASU, their actives are like, oh yeah, there's only like maybe 120 actives. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, that's like two Michigan schools combined, maybe three, if we're looking at small schools. And then like their inactives are like triple that amount. I'm like, oh, that's like, that's how many people are in one school. And that's crazy. Like imagine like Stanford is one of the schools that's like, super hard to get into but what like let's look at like the general schools like ucla uc santa barbara like they must have huge filipino groups that like where they have a bigger student population but then when you think about it like pasu is trying to go to battle of the bamboo um and if they go to battle of the bamboo their school will fund it like can you imagine all of their entire like their group of about 20 to 30 people of their cultural group of dancers getting funding to go to Chicago from California and then like getting funded for that. Like that's a lot of money for 20 people of a flight to Chicago for a weekend. So like that amount of funding could be how much for that one trip for that one school on the West Coast can be how much we as MAFA schools all like get combined in one year from all of our individual schools. And there's like 27 of us. And that's so that's very and like that makes me very like frustrated because we like don't matter. And like it's very hard, especially like oh I'm so sorry. I'm losing my train of thought because I just got angry. But yeah, that's what something I really want to touch on. Um in terms of like the actual question of um like celebrating the culture. I think that we have a much more Americanized version because it's a smaller community um, rather than like coming straight from the from the Philippines. Everybody, a lot of people just go to California. It's so like more traditional. Like they have, um, what is it called? Like fiesta or I can't remember. It's like, a, they have like festivals. They have street festivals like that they do in the Philippines. They have stuff like that. And like us, like let's have a PCN. 
you know, it's it's that that's a very huge deal when that's just like a regular thing for other regions. And that's like like I'm very <laughs> it's frustrating, but yeah. Thank you all. Perfect. So that already touches to um, the next discussion topic that we wanted to touch on. Um, so in terms of resources that are accessible to us as Filipino, Asian Americans living in the Midwest, how do you think it differs than those who live in the West Coast? So Nina obviously talked about um, funding. So like for organizations, they're able to fund great amount of money um, for their members to like travel and like, you know, be a part of like other or Filipino orgs and celebrate our culture. Um, I guess other resources that we were geared towards were like like access to like Asian and Filipino foods or like jobs for Asian Americans. Um, I know obviously it's like that stereotype with uh, with Filipinos like, oh, are you major? You're go you're in college. Oh, are you taking nursing? Oh, are you gonna be a nurse? Oh, blah, blah, blah. and obviously from you know experiences with all of our um, perspective orgs, it's not just nursing. Um, so I feel like specifically, I guess like in Chicago, um, I personally grew up with the whole stereotype like, oh, you should be a nurse. You should you have to go in the medical field. Blah blah blah. blah. And I'm a first generation or second generation. My parents were born in the Philippines, so I'm like a first generation Filipino American. Um, so obviously, you know, my parents give me the whole lecture with like, oh, we did so much for you, so we just want you to like do this, this, and this. But in their mindset, it's like being in the medical field is what, you know, their dream and stuff for their children. Um, so in a sense, I wouldn't say that like, you know, we're not limited in the Midwest as to what resources, I guess specifically I'm talking about jobs. Um, I think it's a matter of that we are still, you know, human beings and it's all depending on whatever uh, field you choose in and like how well you're able to like, per, like succeed in that field that you choose. Should I repeat the question? I feel like I kind of ranted. <laughs> you guys are yeah, you repeat, yeah, can you repeat one more time? Yeah, I, I was like, I was like, oh, yeah. kind of, kind of. You're good. So the question was, um, how do you think us as Filipino and Asian Americans diff, um, like, are accessible to resources? So like in terms of resources, is it just, are, do we have like as much access to like food and like jobs and stuff like that, like Filipino food and stuff, um, as those in the Midwest or as those in the West Coast. Okay, yeah, I think I can answer. It. <laughs> um, yeah, before I answer, uh, sadly I have a class at five fifteen, so sadly this will be uh, my fin final answer to this. But I'll definitely, will, I'll definitely will go to the next round table tomorrow. So yeah, 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 I was there yesterday and I'm happy to be, take some time today to say, say what's up. So I'm here, um, Nicole, I could actually relate to your story because I started as a pre-nursing major at UIC having high hopes of becoming a nurse just just cause like a lot of Filipinos were doing it. I'm like, oh my goodness, man, like my mom's a nurse, my tita's a nurse, my titos, my cousins, my kuyas, my ates, and all that. Yeah, I I thought I kind of came to this uni university thinking having high hopes, but then just like exposing myself to like Filipino culture and all that, and just like just being woke within like culturally, kind of made me realize like maybe nursing isn't for me. I felt like I was only doing nursing just to be a stereotype, then to be an actual nurse. And I feel like uh, uh, I was only in it for the money. That's what, what I felt at the time. So like right now I'm, I study sociology and I also minor in global Asian studies. So um, as we look at it right now, I think it's, especially with me living in Chicago, attending UIC with it being a diverse university, I think it really helped me to have the courage to make the switch just being in that diverse environment and just seeing what what uh, just what's being offered and all that obviously like we already said food obviously chicago we got seafood city we got multiple jollibees and all that like it's a blessing in the skies man i i, I can say like chicago chicago is like 
the California of the Midwest. I, I'm that might be too 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 far fetched to stretch, but that's how I kind of look at it. Well, like I'm also I also feel woke regarding like I know we have a result center in the in the Chicago. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of like other organizations too. It's like a fire on Akbaya and all that and that stuff to that we have that those type of platforms regarding like immigration and like what's happening in the Philippines and all that. Yeah, like as my fourth year, I'm projected to graduate next semester. I I I kinda have an idea where to take from it, but at the same time it's just like where do I want to take from it? So like as of now, I think we're kind of building up towards like having these resources, but I know for a fact that um, we could get stronger from there. Like we're, I think we're building building it up because I feel like now it's more common to see like more uh, Filipinos to take a little bit. I mean, sure, a lot maybe a lot of Filipinos or a lot of Asian Americans are taking STEM classes still, but at the same time, I feel like I feel like more. Especially my years in field, like I feel like a lot of people were in STEM field, but then now I feel like it's actually like, getting better and all that. And just the fact that more students are like being open, are or open to just talk about, hey, I don't know if this field fits me and all that. So like regarding resources in the Midwest, I want to say sure it's kind of getting there regarding like Filipino American networking, Filipino American food and all that. But like it could definitely get better from here, and it's up to us as. Um, Phil Adams here in the Midwest, whether if it's wherever, if you're in Illinois, Michigan, or Wisconsin, it's up to us to make that step, to make the step and to just stand there in the, in the corner. We have to make these actions to progress and all that. And I hope to God that we, we make that mission successful. And I just want to thank, thank I'm very happy to be here and sadly I got to go. So. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you for having me. Well, I was gonna say thank you, but never mind. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, it was so fast. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, Jess or Allison, do you guys wanna? Um, yeah, I think, um, so you were like asking about like resources, differences between like different places and stuff. Um, something I'm, I, I I'm very lucky that my parents, I consider are my biggest resource because even if I did grow up in the Midwest, I still grow up in like, like a full Filipino household. Like I have TFC, like all my family can speak Tagalog, we can understand. And like, I think sometimes it doesn't depend on where you live, but like how you were raised. So like I did say, like my parents were able to support me and whatever. And I am the typical Filipino, I'm a nursing major, but like, that wasn't my parents' decision. It was just my own decision. It just happened to be like, but I think um, like what everyone's getting, like um, it, it's it's slowly changing. It's slow, but like, I think people are starting to kind of just vouch for themselves now and find their own resources. And I think that's something that, so like even like the small, small like sponsorships and stuff really do make a big difference. Like. Um, with FSU being um, the newest Oregon campus, like with FAWIS, which is like the Wisconsin like Filipino Association thing, and they um, have donated to us already, and we got money from our performance that we did, and we only sang like two songs, but even that like small one hundred dollars we got out of it, like that's progress, and like I don't know, I think coming from a small thing like just makes you a lot more appreciative too, so. That's something I can respect out of it. Going off of what Jess was saying, how like um, people kind of find for themselves and get their own resources, I definitely did that a lot, especially when I got to college. Because growing up, I got a lot of Filipino values, but I didn't have a lot of the culture in me. Like my parents weren't people to go out and find other Filipinos per se, and like go to all these Filipino parties. I mean, we had our family, but it wasn't like really traditional Filipino. Like growing up and like we didn't have TFC, we didn't have stuff like that. So I don't speak in, as much Tagalog as I want to be able to. And so like when I get to talk to my cousins now, I ask them to teach me, I ask my Lola to teach me like, 
I try to find as much as I can and like embrace my culture as much as I can. And while like I don't completely lose it. And another thing about resources is it is growing, especially in the Chicagoland area where there is more of Filipinos. But like down here, my major, I'm a speech language pathology major, and my major is predominantly just white girls. That's it looks like a sorority and I kind of bank on the fact that I'm like one of the only Asian Americans in my major to get me to grad school make me stand out in front of all these people and but at the same time that's kind of sad because I might only get accepted because they want a more diverse like population student population like that's a big factor like yes it's good but it's also it's a blessing and a curse kind of thing and it definitely could get a lot better but um I'm glad that we have Jollibee. I honestly waited outside for over an hour for Jollibee when it came out, when it opened. Um, well, thank you both for sharing. I like resonated with everything you guys said on such a deep level, um, especially the whole thing about like diversity being like a requirement for a lot of programs or like um, accept like being accepted just because of that reason. Like, it sucks thinking that you're just part of some quota. And like, but at the same time, it's like, eh, I got in because and y'all all did it. So, but it's whatever. Like, I think everything is, our society is just different when it comes to us. Um, but it's like, it's sad. And like you said, it's a blessing and a curse, but like, it makes us like stronger. And like, I think we're a very strong willed, like, ethnicity and, and we have a very strong world culture um dating all the way back to when you were like co uh, colonized and conquered by the spaniards so yeah i'm sorry my mom's okay um but <laughs> did you guys have anything else to add on nicole i think i'm good well if that's the, that was our last discussion question but i'm so so happy you are so happy i'm so happy tangent that was so I really like the conversation. I think it like really relates yeah. to a lot of people. Well, basically our entire organization uh, as a MAFA umbrella. But thank you so much for both sharing your experiences and like like not holding back at all. Yes, you guys are great. Thank you guys. Represent because both y'all are reps, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Say. Um, and thank you to Charlie and Nathan too. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you guys because this is live stream. But yeah, alrighty. So if you guys have anything else, feel free to always message us. I mean, I know we're, aside from us being on Moffa Board, but, you know, we're always here for, for just to listen and stuff if you guys ever need it. But otherwise, that is it. So thank you guys again. And we hope to see you guys at BACT. Yes. Looks like Yay. <laughs> Thanks, right, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. You know, do we just hit stop broadcast? Yes, yes that's what we do. Oh. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>